Live from WRUE in Tennessee, it's the Scribbling Woman. Hi, I'm Nancy Rue. I am a Scribbling Woman and so are you and that's why we're having this conversation. Here we talk about the writerly life that is unique to you. No matter your age, what season you're in, where you are in your writing career, even if you don't think you have one yet. You are officially a Scribbly, so let's chat. Today, I'm going to ask you to do a lot of pondering. So first, I want you to think back to the last time that you were really on a writing roll. You know, you were in the zone. Everything else disappeared, whether it was your spouse looking for their cell phone, which they can never find, or your teenager interrupting you when the rest of the time they never give you the time of day. And you even forget about your need for that third cup of coffee. You are into it, you are flying, and it is good stuff. Then think about coming back to that later and reading over what you wrote after your spouse found their cell phone, which is right where they left it, and your teenager went back into his hidey hole and you made yourself a latte. Did you wonder, even for a moment, did I actually write that? Where did it all come from? Well, I think I know as much as we can know about those kinds of things. And that's what we're going to talk about in our time together. So where on earth does this come from? What on earth makes it happen? Here's the thing. It's not really on earth at all. It comes from something beyond ourselves. Now, before you poo-poo that and turn this off because you think we're getting just a little bit woo-woo, consider this. Have you ever awakened with an idea that you didn't have when you closed your eyes? Have you ever felt compelled to write about something about which you knew absolutely nothing, which has kind of been the history of my entire writing career? Have you ever, oh, I don't know, been in the middle of writing a story or a nonfiction piece and a character shows up or a thread appears that you did not plan for, and you take it wherever it wants to lead you. Now, if you can answer yes to any of those or something like those, it's my firm belief, born of experience, that that is the spirit of creativity working through your imagination. So here's the thing. The word inspire comes from the Latin word inspirare, which means to breathe into. Now in English, in the 14th century, inspiration referred to a mystical force that animated a person or uh, a mystical profound truth that was revealed to someone unexpectedly and sometimes the least likely person. By the 16th century, it was also used to mean physically breathing in air. And since then, we've added it definitions like influence, or to be moved to do something, or to be spurred or encouraged. Seems like we've lost a little of the mystical connotation, but it's still there at the root of it. So are we talking God here? Well, in my soul, yes. That the quickening of an idea or the animation of a story is my Lord God is as clear to me as the nose on my face, which if you know me, is pretty clear because that is a significant schnoz. Some of your fellow scribblies call this spirit. For others, it's the muse. Those familiar with 12-step programs refer to it as the higher power as we understand it. Even those who resist so much as entertaining the notion of something other will remember a situation like the ones I've just described and say, yeah, I gotta say that was really weird. In January, I'm going to celebrate the 43rd anniversary of my very first publication of something that I wrote. And in the four decades since then, I have talked to a lot of writers. And I estimate, though I haven't you know, measured it empirically, that 90% of them have said something beyond their physical and mental selves entered into their writing. As for the other 10%, they just haven't figured it out yet. This really isn't limited to any particular religion or or spiritual path. It's there for all of us, including those who run screaming for an 
any mention of, of spirituality. If you still can't conceive of this as a, as a God thing, think about what has inspired you. What has suddenly sparked an idea? Was it looking out over Niagara Falls or watching puppies be born or hearing a feature on NPR? Or who's a person who's made you feel like you can take an idea and run with it? Is it a fellow scribbly who says, oh my gosh, you really have to write that? Or is it a brokenhearted teenager whose pain just gets to you and you have to express it? Or is it just that lover who could only be described with a sonnet? Or what were the circumstances under which you were able to get into the zone? I mean, it might have been a weekend writing at the beach, but maybe it was just an hour of silent scribbling with other writers down at Starbucks. Or just the chatter of your kids playing happily in the background while you typed at the kitchen table. Basically, you can't make up the zone. It simply happens somehow. Okay, let's look at it from the opposite vantage point. Have you ever stared at a blank screen or a blank page for 20 minutes? And when that 20 minutes is over, it was still a blank page and a blank screen. Have you ever sat down to just dream about a project and all you could hear was crickets in your mind, which is only helpful if you're actually writing about crickets? Or have you ever managed to write something and then you look at it and realize it's like as generic as store brand applesauce. If you answered yes to any of those, you've, you've felt the frustration. You know you're a good writer. You have original ideas. All you want to do is write something unique and fresh. So why do you feel like you're stirring cement with a toothpick? It's because if we only had what we know mentally in this moment to work with, our creativity would totally flatline. Whatever we each call it, dreams work their way into our imaginations from somewhere outside of ourselves. If we don't tap into that, we're missing what is most magical about writing creatively. All right, so let's think some more. Let's play what if. Writers like to do that, right? What if you did believe that a guiding spirit was feeding your ideas? What if talking to that spirit elicited even more ideas? What if a small, simple practice to put you into a state where you were able to accept that it was coming from someplace else? What if you thanked that guiding spirit for your last really stunning thought? It's a bit like Pascal's wager. You know Pascal's wager? Here's how it goes. At the end of time, someone is flipping a coin. Heads, there is a God. Tails, there isn't. Okay? So if you bet that there is a God and you live like there is one and it comes up tails and there isn't a God, you really haven't lost anything and you've lived a pretty darn good life. If you bet that there is no God, you bet tails. And you live like there is no God and it comes up heads, it turns out there was a God, you pretty much lost everything. But what if you bet that there is a God and you live like there's a God and you come up heads at the end of time, you have won everything. It's the same way with believing that there is some spirit that guides our imaginations and creates our creativity. And speaking of Pascal's Wager, the first novel I ever wrote for adults was based on that. Just saying. Okay, <clears throat> I digress. Okay, what does this look like? I can only speak from my own experience, which is all any of us can do when we're talking about deeply spiritual issues. So let me kind of do a demonstration. All right, this is me when I'm simply relying on my own mental capacity. Okay, and so I get this thing right here between my eyebrows and they get kind of hunched over. And then I start chewing on this nail, none of the others, just the thumbnail. And this is the kind of thing I come up with. We drove from the airport on a really boring road. I remembered how miserable I was there as a teenager. Okay, well, that is absolutely not my best work. <clears throat> But this is me after I've, um, I don't know, I've brewed a cup of tea 
and I've lit a candle and I've said, God, just show me what you're working with. And this is the kind of thing that happens. Mary and I drove from the airport on that seemingly endless road to the beach, lined by what no one associated with the Sunshine State, but is North Florida's signature. Tall, lanky pine trees, as awkward as the adolescence I spent there. <laughs> Dang, that's good. I think I'm going to keep that one. Okay, now don't get me wrong. It's not like we can flip some magic switch and suddenly God's writing our novels for us. I just know in the way that I just know things that when I or any of us open ourselves to the possibility that there are things we can't possibly conjure up on our own, that's when the dreams swirl and the ideas dance and gives us things we weren't even looking for. So how do we open ourselves up? Well, I'm not going to try to give you some kind of prescription. We don't do that on this podcast. This is always about discovering your own writerly life and living it your own way. What I can offer you is a buffet of sorts from which you can serve yourselves up or which might give you some ideas for your own recipes. And these dishes come from the creative cookbooks of your fellow scribblies. This, first of all, from author Janelle Schneider. Free write to your guiding spirit for about 10 minutes before you sink into your actual project. And let me just say, God has taken over that conversation more often than not. Yeah, it's a little out there, but you gotta love it, right? This from Brenda Ullman. Light a candle or two and ask your higher power to be the brightest light in your writing. Or this from many titled Barbara Haley. Whisper a prayer or an offering, even if it's please fill the gap between what's needed and what I have to give. And this one from Janai May, she's one of our, my previous guests. Place a symbol in your writing place. Um, anything from a feather or a shell to a miniature labyrinth to just some random light bulb. Whatever reminds you that it isn't all on you has value. And finally, this from Pam Sparks, whom we refer to as Sparky. She says, create a scent, burn some incense, diffuse some oils, light something lovely. Because aroma has no shape, it lends itself to surrender to that spirit that so wants you to express all that you were created for. Do you remember my guest, Abigail Horgosh from a couple of weeks ago? Marvelous young writer with a fun hat and spirit just coming right out of her curls. Here's what she says about this. The world we view is bigger than what we see. And isn't our very role as writers to reveal that world? It is, and we can't play that role alone. I always end with the final question for you to ponder further and maybe even write about in your journal. This time, what is one concrete way that you could dream with spirit? Did you invite God for a coffee, imagine your higher power in the clouds, take a drive or a walk and have an actual out loud conversation, which as playwright Sarah Greek says, could actually become a little cheeky. All you have to do is show up. What is beyond you will do the rest. If you'd like to learn more about this or even contribute to a conversation, feel free to visit www.nancyrue.com and check out the blog. Until next time, scribblies, scribble on.